So synchronization in telecommunication networks uh, has been always an important uh, enabler for the networks uh, to properly operate. Uh, uh, originally, frequency synchronization was uh, sufficient to, to allow all the equipment to uh, operate uh, at the same speed uh, in order to, for instance, uh, avoid uh, data uh, uh, slips, uh, buffer overflow or underflow. Or in case of mobile networks, in case of GSM, uh, it started to be important to deliver accurate frequency to the radio base stations in order to generate the, the radio signal with the correct uh, carrier frequency. Uh, but over the time, and especially recently, it became very important to uh, distribute also time synchronization in the network. And there are various reasons for that, uh, but uh, especially mobile networks uh, that are operated with the time division duplex, uh, uh, it was important to make sure that the radio frames from different base stations uh, is delivered at a certain uh, instant of time. In this way, it is possible to uh, prevent uh, interferences between uh, ADS and uh, base stations. There are other reasons uh, like uh, applications that require time synchronization to operate uh, like in industrial automation. So this is really a fundamental requirement uh, uh, in, I would say, today networks and it is expected to become even more important in the future. Okay, so there is a need of uh, transporting synchronization uh, to, to be able to, to get services or also uh, like 3GPP or wireless, as Stefano mentioned before. And there are different ways of uh, transmitting or getting this synchronization through, um, to these applications. One way could be like through GNSS. You can have GNSS receivers. For instance, the US uh, use GNSS in the base stations to get synchronization. And there are other ways like uh, uh, PTP, uh, uh, Precision Timing Protocol, that's uh, the IEEE 1588, and there is also synchronous Ethernet. Uh, what we did in question 13, we developed three profiles. One is uh, uh, G.8265.1, that is for frequency synchronization. The second one was uh, G.8275.1, that's for phase and time synchronization when you have uh, a network that uh, deploys 1588 in, and synchronous internet in every node of the network. And the third profile is G.8275.2, so many numbers, <laughs> that is uh, for phase and time synchronization, but in this case, you don't have assisted uh, network. What that means is that you don't have 1588 and synchronous internet in every node of the network. Uh, the third profile is more used in, in North America, where they do have GNSS in the base stations, and now you need PTP or uh, Precision Time Protocol as a backup for, when, uh, for, the net, for the base station when GNSS is lost. So we have been working on these profiles. Uh, there is also uh, some management that we have been working uh, for all these different applications, and this work has been uh, we started since this work really since 2003, so we have been working on synchronization for many, many years. And you see the deployment getting, uh, you see more of the deployments of these technologies now in the network. And with that, what happened is that uh, operators now deploying these solutions, they find that they need new features. And with that, we keep enhancing the profiles. So at this meeting, uh, we're, we're at the uh, I said with 15 meeting as we speak, and we're, we're doing a new revision of all the three profiles with some new improvements, new features that are needed by the operators to be used in the network. So question 13 is actually a very special group. Uh, it started to work uh, with synchronization since the, the early 90s because of SDH that uh, required uh, synchronization for the network to operate. Uh, a few people are actually in the group uh, since then. So I, I would say very uh, expert uh, people uh, working with synchronization for many years. Uh, and uh, it, I would say that one of the characteristics of this group is, uh, is it coming from various uh, industries. Uh, they bring various perspectives, various experiences. There are, uh, several uh, representatives from uh, 
network operators, uh, from uh, system vendors, clock vendors. Uh, and I would say there is a very good uh, feeling in the group. Uh, they always uh, try to cooperate uh, to find the solutions to the problems. And uh, the result uh, is evident because we have been uh, releasing uh, so many recommendations uh, over, the, over the life of this group. Uh, I would say in the last uh, 15 years, uh, about 20 recommendations have been uh, delivered addressing various aspects, uh, for instance, of the uh, distribution of timing over packet networks. And uh, um, as a way of working, we normally meet uh, four times per year, either uh, in the ITT headquarter in uh, Geneva or uh, in uh, locations hosted by participants. Uh, and uh, over these meetings, it's, it's very important that when we meet uh, to essentially uh, discuss and find solutions. Uh, and then when we meet in Geneva, we complete the work by releasing the official uh, uh, documents uh, as recommendations. So, like I said before, you have Sinki and 1588, and they both uh, work together to deliver synchronization in the, uh, through the, the, the network. So, if you lose, let's say you have a rearrangement on the, on the Sinki, so you might have a phase transient in the, in the 1588. So, there is uh, some studies going on right now. We have an enhanced clock in uh, defining G.8273.2 that uses enhanced Sinki. And it has a very tight requirement for phase, uh, tra for phase and time um, accuracy. And uh, so any transient on the Sinki, how that, that uh, affects this clock. So that's one item that we're working on now and, and we're studying it. The other one is uh, when you lose Sinki E for a, a longer period. And now you have your network only rely on uh, 1588. So that's a, another item that we are supposed to um, get that into g.8273.2 at the next revision. So those are things that we're studying right now. There is also enhancements to best master clock algorithm in 8275.1. We also are developing a new supplement because what happened is that when you look at all these profiles, you have several different uh, functions and uh, several different features that you can use depending on the application. And sometimes for someone not attending question 13 or not being involved in, in our work, it might find confusing how you use all these different functions in the network and how the operators can deploy and make a good use of those features. So we're developing a, a supplement that would help implementers to use all these features. And also um, we keep on improving the profiles as we get more feedback from the operators as they are deploying these profiles. Some features might be missing and then they bring contributions to, to question 13. And then based on those contributions, we, we keep on uh, revising and improving the profiles. So for the future, we uh, are expecting to continue to, uh, let's say, improve and evolve the solutions that have been defined uh, in uh, question 13, like uh, the, the uh, work on the PTV profiles, as mentioned by Silvana earlier. Uh, so the, there is a continued uh, evolution of these uh, solutions. Uh, and uh, as uh, mobile networks evolve, uh, moving towards 6G, we expect there are uh, new and new use cases that uh, will uh, require uh, accurate uh, timing. Uh, uh, so not only industrial automation, but maybe automated vehicles, uh, uh, robots in a factory, and so on. So we will uh, certainly try to address all these use cases and the new uh, requirements. Uh, and of course, uh, at the same time, look uh, at the uh, evolution of the technology. As an example, uh, the, the clock technology is evolving via use of uh, optical clocks uh, and even quantum-based uh, uh, synchronization solutions.